this heart open wide from the depths from the heights I will bring a sacrifice with these hands lifted high hear my song hear my cry I will bring a sacrifice I will bring a sacrifice I lay me down I'm not my own I belong to you alone lay me down lay me everybody. How's everybody doing today? Hello. All right, that's better. There we go. Well, welcome to Northeast Christian Church. My name is Justin. I'm the lead pastor here. Behind me is Mr. TJ, Jonas, and Joel, our youth. They, they will be leading us in worship along with the rest of the band. I'm sorry, y'all just get the rest of the band today, okay? And so 
Um, but uh, hey, we're excited. This is Youth Sunday, everybody. And so they're going to be leading worship. Just to let you guys know a little bit of what it's going to look like today. They're going to be leading worship. Um, we're also going to be doing, they're going to be doing the offering meditation, the communion meditation. We're like making them do everything, okay? And so, exactly, they greeted you, they were warm, they were welcome. Some of them smiled, that was really impressive. All right, like, some of y'all smiled, good job, good job on that. And so, but we are super excited about our students. We are going to end up our series, because I said so, with Mr. Wayne leading us in the word and everything like that. And so we're super excited. This is, like I said, yeah, woo-hoo for Mr. Wayne. Okay. So, welcome everybody to church. If this is your first time, like I said, this is, welcome to church, it's great to have you. I want to encourage you to go ahead and fill out your connection card that you received. Let me, let me see, there we go. I'm not used to holding a mic, I'm sorry. All right, um, go ahead, fill this out, and you can place these in the offering trays when they come around a little bit later on in the service. And uh, if you don't get an opportunity to do that, you just bring it to me. I want to make sure you guys get a gift that says thank you so much for joining us here today. And as always, don't forget, throughout this service, it, we are a church that prays for one. So be thinking and be mindful of who should be here with you because they are your one. So let's be praying for one throughout our service here today. All right, let's continue to worship now.
Thank you for the cross that you have carried. Thank you for your blood that was shed. You took the weight of sin upon your shoulders. Sacrificed your life so I could live. Thank you for the cross that you have carried. Thank you for your blood that was shed. You took the weight of sin upon your shoulders. Sacrificed your life so I could live. Now nothing is holding me back. From you, Redeemer of my soul. Now nothing can hold me back from you. Your love will never let me go. So when I was growing up, I wanted to be like my brother in everything I did. Uh, he was in theater and I joined theater. If he was doing some sort of club at school, I would join that. Uh, whatever he was doing, I was doing. 
Uh, and I remember one day at church, he got baptized. And for me, that was just the next step of being like him. So when I got baptized, I didn't really understand what it meant and the, the meaning behind it. But as I've grown up and as I've grown up alongside teachers, friends, parents, siblings, and as I've encountered new challenges in my life, I've come to truly understand what it means to be Christian and to be baptized. And uh, today, as you're taking your communion, I just ask that you think about what it means to be Christian to you. Oh, let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we could all be here today. Lord, as we take our communion, let us just remember what you did for us all those years ago. Let's remember when we take the bread and we take the cup that being Christian isn't just a title. It's a way of life, Lord. And thank you so much for every opportunity you give us to live in your path that you laid out all those years ago. And it's in your name that I do pray. Amen.
I'm a, call myself a Christian, um, but there's a lot of things that Christians do that they're supposed to do that I don't do. One of those things is tithes and offerings. Um, I've always been good at giving back to community, but I've never been good at giving back to God. Um, and especially since I started working, um, you know, I get my paycheck and I go, hey, I want that movie. I'm going to get that movie. Um, and that's one of those things I need to work on in my walk with Christ. Um, there are things that all of us need to work on with, on with our walk with Christ. And I'm sure as many of you here that um, need to work on your tithes and offerings, same with me. Um, in the Bible, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, it says, um, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Um, it's definitely truth there. Um, as I invest more in myself and less in God, I, I feel the joy in life start to leave. And I want to rectify that. Give myself back to God. Um, will you pray with me? God, I thank you that you could bring these people here and that we could all join here for this day to celebrate your life and to learn about you. I pray you would help everyone here to absorb your word and that you would uh, change their hearts according to how they need to be changed. And hear me pray. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Woo. I feel like I'm with the youth group right now. Well, I guess I am, ain't I? So I'm not wearing my glasses on purpose, so if you're just wondering why they're hanging on my shirt, it's uh, easier for me to look at your beautiful faces. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so we're on uh, week four because I said so. You know, and I really love this uh, series because I heard it so much growing up. Because I said so. And you know what? A lot of, you know, oh, I wouldn't say a lot, but there may be people in here today that say, you know, because I said so, parenting, it really doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't have kids. I don't ever want kids. But I want to play a little game. Uh, see how this will connect with everybody. If you have kids, raise your hand. Keep your hands up. If you're going to have kids, raise your hand. Keep your hands up, everybody. You got kids? Yep, keep them up. <laughs> All right, and some of you are like, well, I don't want kids, and that's okay. Do you know somebody that has kids? Raise your hand. All right, so this applies to everybody then. All right, we good? So our first uh, point that we're going to make today and it's, uh, is if we don't teach our children to follow Christ, the world will teach them not to. You know, and like I said, I heard this a lot growing up. You know, my parents, family, they always said it to me. Like, you know, don't talk to me like that. Well, why? Well, because I said so. And, you know, it just never really sat well with me. So to give you kind of an example of maybe part of my childhood, prepare something for you today. Ring, ring. Hello. Again? He said what? All right, well, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm terribly sorry. I'll, uh, I'll talk to him. I don't know where he gets it from. All right, thanks. Joel, I just got a call from the school. Again. Okay, I don't understand. You cursed out a kid in class? <laughs> he cursed me out first. What do you want me to do? Look, kid. I take you to church. You're in the youth group. What more do I need to do? Like, I don't understand. Where do you get this from? 
Do you, I mean, are you learning from a kid at school? What's the problem? You really want to know? What yeah, I tell from? me. What the problem? I learned it from you, Dad. What? Every time that you and Mom have the slightest little disagreement, you start to curse her out right off the bat. Every time you're on the road and some guy starts to cut you off, what do I hear you do? You start to curse him out, too. And whenever I get in trouble, what do you do to me? You curse me out. You want to know where I get it from? I get it from you. Guys, we are the examples. Our kids, they're very observant. They watch everything we do. You want to wonder why they do some of the things they do? It's because they watch us. You know, like I said, this, this really hit me hard because, you know, my son, my five-year-old son, he, I always told myself I'm never going to be like my parents in, this, in the aspect of because I said so. I'm going to explain to them why. I'm going to explain you're not going to do this because... It will harm you because it's bad, you know, because the truth is I want my kid to be successful. And, I, you know, I think that we all as parents want to see our, our kids succeed. We want them to all be successful. And, you know, and some of us, it's we look at great success as uh, a great education, uh, being good at sports, or just honestly just getting a job. You know, great success for my parents growing up was a little, you know, it's a little different than what I have for Jackson. You know, my father, he was raised by, um, you know, just some, a single mother. She didn't have, they didn't have a father in his life. And their, you know, her success for him was to survive, was to have shelter over his head at night, to have food on the table. That was success for her. Uh, for me growing up, my dad's biggest success for me was, honestly, just to graduate high school. I was the first grandson in my whole family, both sides, to graduate high school. That was, for him, that was the big, biggest success. You know, the other one was, you know, he wanted me to get a job and have insurance. He didn't care what job I had. He just wanted me to get a job, health insurance, to have a retirement. That's all he cared about. He wanted me to be financially stable. My mom, you know, it was a little different from her, you know, what, she's, what she viewed success. Honestly, she told me I was... 16 years old, and I was a Pizza Hut delivery driver, and he, she goes, I don't care if you deliver pizzas for the rest of your life. She said, I just want you to follow God. In every aspect of your life, I want you to follow God. Whenever you have problems, whenever you have issues, I want you to follow Christ. That's her big, biggest success. You know, whenever I tell her I'm coming up here to preach and how nervous I am, and, you know, just, you know, I'm just like, oh, Lord, Justin's making me do this again, you know. <laughs> That's her biggest success in her life for me, is to be here doing this. And like I said, we all, as we all, for all of us parents, different, you know, success for our children looks different. You know, some of us, it's academics. We want them to get good SAT scores. Uh, some of us as parents, we want our kids to be really good at sports. You know, we want them to, you know, get a future scholarship and go to a great college. Some of us want to do, have them do music or dance or a hobby. Um, and then, honestly, some of us as parents just want our kids to survive, you know. <laughs> I think a lot of us, we just, you know, we want to raise our kids up to a point where they're not sitting there living with us at 35, and eventually we can just kick them out. I mean, that, to me, that's a big success for me. You know, and all these things, they're, all these reasons are great. Any reasons you have is a great reason for success. But let me ask you the question, Abe. What is your idea of being a successful parent? But really... What is God's idea of being a successful parent? So today we're actually going to have a, we're going to start off with showing you a uh, bad example of being a parent. And, um, and interestingly enough, he was actually a great hero. He actually, de he actually defeated a giant. He actually killed bears and lions with his bare hands. He ruled a nation and he brought it to its highest point. I mean, he was just, he was a poet, he was a musician, he was a great king. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about King David. King David was an amazing, amazing man. But, guys, he stunk as a father. He was a terrible father. And one of the examples, or I'm actually going to give you a couple of examples of that. But, you know, one of the you know, reasons why he was such a terrible father was because he had terrible decisions on marrying. See, King David actually had multiple children 
from multiple wives. And he had really, I mean, he just really couldn't get that whole marrying thing down. And, you know, that's actually a lesson for another day on King David. Um, so we're going to actually uh, show you one example. It's from 2 Samuel chapter 13. Um, one of his sons named Amnon, and this kid was rotten. And, you know, I think we can say that, right? Some kids are just rotten, right? And I think we all know, know, someone, know, one that, know someone that has a rotten kid. But don't be too judgmental, though, guys, because I'm sure at some point someone's looked at your kid and thought the same thing. <laughs> I know they have. <laughs> so, but anyway, so we're going to go back to Amnon. So basically, he does something really terrible to his sister, his half-sister Tamar. And David found out about this, and guess what David did? He did nothing. He was uninvolved. He got a little upset, but he did nothing to his son. And then later on, uh, his, or Tamar's other brother, Absalom, found out what was going on, and he killed Amnon. And David found out about this, and he was upset, and he was crying. And what did he do as a father? You have one son doing something terrible to his daughter, and then another son killing that son, and David just sat there idly by, didn't do anything. That's how uninvolved, how dysfunctional his family was. Guys, this was, a, this was worse than Jerry Springer. I mean, <laughs> and like I said, through it all, he just did nothing. And another example is this. We had another son, uh, Adonijah. Uh, this kid was also just a rotten punk. He sat there and he gathered forces around him as his father was getting older. And he said, you know what? I'm going to take my father's crown. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over. David found out about it. And again, what did he do? Nothing. David was uninvolved. He just, he just, I don't want to say he didn't care, but truthfully, he didn't care. And sadly, that situation, it's, it's, not new, it's not unique in the Bible. In fact, it's harder to find examples of good parents in the Bible than it is bad parents. You can find bad parents in the Bible all day long. And all throughout history, you can find uh, bad examples of parents. So what does it mean then? What does it truly mean to have success as a child as a for our children well that brings us to our first point we are called to parent with a purpose <coughs> okay there you go so we are called to be intentional parents we're called to be purposeful parents and you know hopefully that makes sense to a lot of us being intentional and uh being purposeful you know because there's so many other things in our lives that we're intentional about, that we have a purpose about. I mean, think about this. When we go to buy a house, we go and we, go, we look into it. We find the right neighborhood. We have a purpose. We know what we want. Uh, when we have our retirement, we know exactly what. I'm sure there's many of you in, you, many of you in here that know exactly when you're going to retire, how much money you're going to have, the investments that you have. I'm sure you have it all planned out, right? How about this for some of the younger ones? How about vacations? I'm sure when you go on vacation, and if you're like me and it drives my wife absolutely insane, I plan my vacation out to the nth degree. She, I know everything we're going to do. I know when we're going to get there. I know when we're waking up, what activities we're doing that day. And all the time she looks at me out at the end of it and she goes, I need a vacation from my vacation. She just, she's just so exhausted over it. But that's, I mean, that's how intentional we are about so many other things in our life. So, but when it comes to parenting, a lot of times I feel like, and I'm not saying to just y'all, but I'm saying to me as well, sometimes we just, we just kind of wing it, don't we? We're just kind of like, yeah, they'll be all right. They'll figure it out. You know, it, it's, you know, I look at parenting, you know, as two, two types of examples with parenting. One uh, example of parenting is kind of like a roller coaster. You know, there's ups and downs. There's moments where it's, it's awesome, it's exciting. You're like, wow. Then there's other moments where you're like, holy crap, what's going on? And you think you're going to die. And, and you're just like, you're wondering when it's going to stop. And then when it does stop, you're like, whoo, I survived that. Good Lord, that was awesome. But not again. And then there's other, you know, then there's the other type of parenting where it's like, it's like sailing a ship. You know, when you sail a ship, you have to know everything about that. You have to know exactly where you're going, how much rope you need to bring. You have to know um, where, the, where the course is. You have to know where the tie is at. You have to know how much food to bring. You have to plan every little detail out. You know, and what I want to ask you guys today is this. Are you, as parents, are you riding a roller coaster or are you charting a course? 
Which style of parenting are you looking at today? And, and you know, incidentally, there's a, uh, there's, a, there's a term out there, and I don't know if some of you have probably heard about it, but it's called free-range parenting. <laughs> some of y'all heard about that? Well, free-range parenting. So this is what free-range parenting looks like. So you get your kid, and they go off to school, and they do everything they want to do, and you're like, and you just kind of sit back in the back seat, and you're like, he'll figure it out. Oh, look, he'll make his mistakes, or she'll make her mistakes, and she'll figure it out. It'll be okay, and it's beautiful. Look, look at him, look at him grow, and look at the mistakes that he made. Oh, wow, he chopped off his hand. That's okay. That's all right, but you know what? He learned from it, and he's going to be better for it. There's a problem with that. Guys, there's a problem with parenting like that. Do you want to know what this problem is? It's huge. Sin. Sin is that problem. We're all born with this horrible thing called sin. And sin leads us to pick those bad choices. So without parenting and putting our children on a path, they're always going to choose, more than likely, the wrong path. They're always going to choose sin. You know, they're going to put themselves onto a path of selfishness and to greed and just everything that you're like wondering like how did you get there i mean i was sitting over here watching the whole time and going man this kid is just horrible how did this happen hold on let me check my phone for facebook yep okay yeah i don't don't get it pinterest had nothing but but here's the thing you want to know what the bible says about this and i found a great verse i'm sure uh a lot of you have actually uh have read this verse before and what I want to say for the parents that don't have kids yet or maybe have small kids, you know, I want you to take this first. I want you to memorize it. I want you to stamp it on your forehead. I want you to tattoo it on your arm. And it's uh, Proverbs 22, 6. And it says, oh, yes, that's first thing. Sorry. Wrong, guys. Proverbs 22 says, start a child on the way that he should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Guys, that right there, that verse is a verse of intentionality. That's a verse of purpose. You know, we don't train when we do sports or when we do when we go to gym. We don't just train willy-nilly. You know, we go there with a purpose. And it's the same thing with our kids. We're supposed to train them with a purpose. You know, you're supposed to have a plan. That's what we're called to do for our children. We're supposed to set them on that right path. And, you know, I'm going to bring up another point here, and it's as parents, we're called to be personal spirit trainers for our children. Here's the thing. If you have personal trainers that will guide you and they will tell you how much, how many miles to run to lose weight, well, that's the same thing with us. We're supposed to be personal spirit trainers for our children. We're supposed to guide them. We're supposed to tell them right from wrong. We're supposed to show them in the Bible. And most importantly, guys, we're supposed to lead by example. Because like I said, everything that we do, our kids watch. Trust me, whenever you're wondering and you're looking at Jackson and you're like, my son, wondering why he's doing that, he learned it from his mother. (laughs) He learned everything bad from her. And I don't understand it. I tried to talk to him. (laughs) But guys, (laughs) but you know, you ask yourself, how much time are we supposed to do this? How much, how, mu- how involved am I supposed to get it? You guys, it's not just a matter of bringing them into church or bringing them in part of the youth group or bringing them back there to Sunday school. No, it's about being there every step of the way, leading that example every step of the way. We're actually, we're, like I said, we're supposed to train them in the way that sh- they should go. And you know, in that, in the end of that verse where it says, you know, it says, for they will never, they may stray, but they will never depart. The problem is that's a, that's a, that's a, pro- it, Proverbs is not a promise. Proverbs is a principle. It tells you that in this verse that there is a wrong way and there is a right way. With sin, with no intentional purpose of, the tr- of a parent training our kids, they're always, like I said, they're going to choose that wrong path. But with intentionality, with actually having a purpose, we're actually going to guide them in the way that they should go. Um, so, like I said, what is the purpose? Be- what is the purpose to all this? What is why am I training my kids? Like, what is the ultimate goal here? 
What are we trying to do as permits? And that brings us to our final point. This is our goal. Christian parents help their kids to pursue God. Guys, this bottom line, this is our highest pur- purpose as parents. We are here to guide our kids to pursue God. So that one day, when they're out on their own, they're pursuing them on their own. They're taking all those values that you instilled in them, the example that you led, and they're making it their own. They're owning it. And they're pursuing God on their own. That is our highest calling. And you want to know what? Even King David, as a rotten as parent as he was, believe it or not, he actually figured out. You know, he was lying on his deathbed, and he was ready to give uh, Solomon, his other son, you know, the throne. And he says in uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 2, verse 1, he says, When the time drew near for David to die, he gave uh, his charge to Solomon, his son. I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said. So be strong, act like a man, and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and his commands, his laws and his regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may proper, prosper in all, this, in all that you do and wherever you go. Even King David is as horrible as a parent as he was. He figured it out in the end. Follow God. And all the things that you do, you will succeed. Simple as that. And as parents, that is our purpose. That is our one, one purpose. You know, it took David to his deathbed to figure that out. Let me ask you all a question this. How long will it take you to figure it out? How long will it take you as parents to figure out that you are leading the example, that your kids are watching everything that you're doing? Will you pray with me now? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for everything that you do, Lord. Lord God, please guide us in the way that we should go. Lord, please help us to be the examples that we need for our children. Father, we make mistakes. We all do. We're not perfect. Lord, you know I'm not perfect. I make mistakes and sin every day. But Lord, guide us, guide me to be a better parent and a better example to my son and our children so that way we can show them what, it's, what it means to be true followers of Christ. Lord, bless everyone in here, Lord. Bless their walk with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All the poor and powerless And all the lost and lonely All thieves will come confess And know that you are holy And know that you are holy
shout it. Go on and scream it from the mountains. Go on and tell it to the masses. He Shout it, go on and scream it from the mountains, go on and tell it to the masses, that he is God. Shout it, go on and scream it from the mountains, go on and tell it to the masses, that he is God. Shout it, go on and scream it from the mountains, go on and tell it to the masses, that he is God. Thank you guys so much. Uh, hey, everybody, thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Once again, if this is your first time in Northeast, we want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. Make sure you fill out your connection card. And if you didn't get an opportunity to place these in the offer trays when they came around, it's perfectly all right. You can go ahead and bring it to me at the end of the service. Um, I'll be right up here at the end of the service, and uh, uh, you can go ahead and do that. A few things I want to draw your attention to on here, all right? First and foremost, we are still doing our PB&J Spread the Love Drive. That will be going until next Sunday. Um, we are planning to have a representative from Osceola Council on Aging come to collect everything uh, that morning during the service and everything. We're going to confirm that this week, but that's when it will end next Sunday. All right, you got any questions about that? Come see me afterwards. Also, um, we have elder nomination forms that are in the back there. They'll be out there for a few weeks. So uh, it's really important that you guys do this process. This is a process that we've developed as a church, and so we'll encourage you guys to go ahead and fill those out. If you got any questions, come see me after the service, and I'll be more than happy to explain kind of that process to you and everything. And finally, let's everybody, let's thank our youth for everything they did this morning. They did an awesome job. So this is where I, let me test this out here. All right, so that's all I have for you all today. TJ, you got anything? No, I didn't. All right, Jonas, Jonas, you got anything? No? Joel, Joel, anything? No, I do not. All right. You guys passed. You guys did a great job. All right. As we close today, uh, let's go ahead and, and pray, asking God to continue to give us one person who shares love with. Lord, we love you so much, and we give thanks to you for all that you've done, all that you've given us. And, uh, Lord, we just ask each and every moment that we have on this earth that there's just put somebody in our way, put somebody in our life that we can share your love with so they can know you the way that we know you, and we can honor you with... Uh, which is uh, sharing your love with them. We love you so much, Lord. We praise you. We thank you. It's your holy and precious name we pray here today. Amen. You all have a wonderful week. If there's any decision on your heart, I'll be right up here. With this heart open wide, 
from the depths, from the heights, I will bring. 